Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Lacio versus Abbott. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Ms. Lacio, you say before this court gave you a date to appear to resolve your paternity dispute, your relationship with the defendant was on the brink of ending. You're here to prove that he is the father of your seven-month-old daughter, Aubrey, and are hoping to save your family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Abbott, you say you are devastated the plaintiff has put your family's future in jeopardy and state you plan to leave her if the DNA results prove you are not Aubrey's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Lacio, what is the state of your relationship exactly? I'm here today to save our family. I'm here today to show Jacob that he is the father of our seven-month-old daughter, Aubrey. That I've made a mistake, but he, I know he is the father of Aubrey. Our relationship has been very bumpy. Jacob has no trust in me at all. He has a tracker on my phone. And you say the day this court called you? Yes, the day... He was moving? Yes. Mm. The day that I got the call from the courtroom, he was moving out. He had packed his stuff. He was ready to be out of the door. I was out the door, Your Honor. I had everything packed in my truck. I was ready to go. Um, this courtroom calling her has actually saved us as of right now. And I need the results um, of this paternity today to find out if Aubrey is my daughter. Uh, because if she's not, I'm gone. I, I am gone. I want to understand, Mr. Abbott, your doubt. Why are you doubtful? Lacey told me she was pregnant, and we were very excited. I told family members, you know, we went to a paternity place to find out um, if she was actually pregnant after we had taken an at-home test. And they had told her she was, and her family members started buying her maternity clothes and so forth, and she had like a guilty conscience, and, and, and that's when she told me she had messed up and she had slept with the other dude, um, that this could possibly not be my child. Mm. And I asked her, what do you mean? She told me that I, c I could only be the possibility, but right when she got the, her first ultrasound, she found out the conception date, and it was Easter, and she slept with him and me that Easter weekend. Mm. All right. So, Ms. Lacio, how did you end up with another man? You say you made a mistake, but how? We were... Jacob and I had just recently gotten back together. We were on, like, a little break, and we were supposed to have, like, this great Easter weekend and go camping and everything, and I don't remember why we were fighting, but we were in an argument. So, and I was hanging out with one of my friends, and I reached out to another guy. And whenever I reached out to him, we ended up hooking up. We hooked up one time, and then I was back together with Jake. And when you say hooked up, that means you had sex? Yes. Did you use protection? No, we did not. Mm. Who is this guy? Um, he was just someone from my past, nobody special or anything. It's more like... I feel like I more contacted him to, like, shove it in his face, like, oh, I have my own place and a car now, and, like, I'm doing so good. That's more of the reason, like, why I even... even contacted him. It was more to shove it in his face, like, I'm doing so good now, and you're still doing nothing with your life. Your Honor, she, she also cheated on me with him a year ago and, and, and kept it a secret, and thank, thankfully for my friend um, telling me if he would have never told me, I still wouldn't know to this day. She sat there and lied to me the whole time, saying she didn't do anything. Um, there, there's nothing to worry about. I wouldn't do this to us. And I sat there and I did my little investigation for a few hours after she went to bed on her phone, found a fake Facebook, got into it, and found out everything. Um, and that's when I woke her up and said, "You." going to sit here and deny it now when I have the proof. So throughout this whole time, she's really given me no reason to believe her because um, I felt I was completely fooled. That's, that's why we're here today. I want to know if Aubrey's my girl. And I want to understand this. You say a year ago she cheated with the same guy? Same. So I thought you said you only slept with him just the one time. I slept with him a year prior to that, and that was the first time that I had cheated on Jake with him, and since that point, 
I denied it and everything at first. I didn't think he could find evidence and I figured it wasn't worth losing my family over. That was like a mistake that I made and I wasn't going to admit to it. I wasn't gonna lose my family over one horrible choice that I made. And after that, it's Jacob started with always thinking I was cheating, always thinking I was up to no good, always just automatically assuming like, oh, if you're here, what are you doing here? Oh, it's GPS on your phone says you're here because he, he's always had a GPS tracker on my phone. And there's been times with the GPS, I've been asleep in bed and he's been up checking it and the GPS will say, I'm down the street when I've been in bed sleeping. So how are you gonna believe a GPS if I've been in bed sleeping and it says I'm down the street if it's done it once? How am I gonna say, I don't know why it says I'm over there. If it's messed up once, it's very possible it's messed up So after times. you cheated and you came clean and you told him, he had this tracker on your phone and he would never believe anything you say? Correct. Did you sleep with this man more than one time or just the one time? Just the one time a year ago and then just the one time um, at the conception date. So more than one time. Okay, that's what I was hearing. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So I want to understand these dates. Let me go to my calendar. The doctor told you your conception date was when? Easter weekend. Easter weekend. So that's April. It was in between like April 16th through April 23rd. All right, so April 16th through the 23rd is the window of conception. Yes. All right. Now, when were you intimate with Mr. Abbott? I was intimate with Mr. Abbott before the window of conception and on the 20th and then after as well. Okay, so during the window of conception on the 20th, you were intimate with Mr. Abbott. Yes. Now, when were you intimate with this other guy that you say you made the one-time mistake, which is really two times? On April 18th, Your Honor. April 18th. So this is the other guy. Yes, Your Honor. So very clearly, both men fall in the window of conception. Yes, Your Honor. Two days apart. Mm. Why are you so certain Aubrey is Mr. Abbott's biological child? How can you be that certain? I just, I know she's his. I know there's no possible way that she is the other guy's. But I know conception, you know conception does not require intention. Yes. You understand? Yes. There's nowhere in the biology book that says intention is a prerequisite for conception. How do you know that this other man is not your baby's father? The way that Jake is with her, I believe that's only something a father and daughter can have. I know there's step parents out there that have great relationships with their children, but the bond that they have together, when he walks in the room, the way that she crawls after him first, the way that she'll throw a fit until her dad will look down at her and pick her up, that's not something a step parent or anyone in the world can have. That's only a father and daughter relationship. That's that's their bond. Jake is her dad. And do you feel this connection too, Mr. Abbott? I do. Um, family says she looks a lot like me, um, but with the conception date and her doing that was so close, I, I, I can't be certain. And so Aubrey's seven months old. Yes, yeah, so Up until this time, you've maintained a positive, healthy relationship with her, even though you're doubtful? Yes, Your Honor. I've been there the whole time throughout her pregnancy. I mean, look at her right there. I love this girl. She is my daughter. I, I, I just need the answers to be sure uh, so we can move forward past this. And so you're an involved father? Very involved. Um, I feed her. I change her diapers. I'm there. Um, every, every minute I'm not at work, I'm there with Aubrey and the rest of our family. And with our son as well. And you have an older son. Yes. That's not Mr. Abbott's biological child. No, he is not Mr. Abbott's biological child. But, but he's a father to him as yes, well. Yes, my son knows Mr. Abbott as dad. He made the choice to call him dad. 
and Jake allowed him to do so. From the time he was three years old, Jake has been there to be his father, to be his role model, to help out with his, to help out with schoolwork, to take him to the park, to show him, you know, different ways to handle situations with friends and growing up and just being a boy. Jake is always there to help him in any way that he needs. And so, <laughs> your intention to leave the family, if in fact Aubrey's not your biological child, will most certainly affect this young man as well. Right, and... So a lot is at stake. Very much so, yes. Were you at the hospital when the baby was born? I was. You were? I was. Did you go to doctor's appointments? Yes, Your Honor. And you participated? Yes, Your Honor. And when you were at the hospital, did you sign the birth certificate? No, I did not sign the birth certificate. And you did not? No, I did not, and that was a very awkward moment um, because I wasn't sure if Aubrey was mine, and by then we had all known that she had slept with the other guy again, um, and it was kind of her choice until we got paternity. To, for me to sign the birth certificate. It was her choice that it, she wanted you to. And she didn't necessarily want me to. She wanted to make sure that I was the father before I signed it. And so was his family at the birth, Ms. Lasio? Yes. And they were aware that you told him not to sign the birth certificate? Yes, they were, Your Honor. And when they saw the baby, what was their reaction? That she looks just like Jake. That she was a spitting image of her dad. It was just hard. I didn't want him to sign his name on the birth certificate if he wasn't because of my bad choice. I feel it's best that we need DNA. We need it done so we can move on with our family. But that's what we need. I can't have him sign his name when someone else could be responsible. And I didn't want to mess up his life by having him put his name on a birth certificate. If she wasn't his, that wouldn't be fair to him and it wouldn't be fair to her. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Did you ever tell this other man that he potentially could be the father? Yes. And ask if he wanted to be a part of her life? Yes, Your Honor, I did. I contacted him through Facebook and he wanted nothing to do with it at all whatsoever. Mm. He told me, have an abortion, it's not mine, I can't have kids. I heard every excuse from him, and he was just a loser. Wow. That's unfortunate. Our relationship is crumbling at this point, Your Honor. I know Jacob is a father, and I know with these results, our family can move forward, and we can be a family, and we can go on and get married, and do everything that we wanted to do together with our family. And so, Mr. Abbott, do you regret that choice, not signing the birth certificate, or you believe it was the right thing to do? I believe at the time it was the right thing to do. Now, I wish I would have signed it. Uh, Why do you say that? When you stand here saying you have doubts and you have your truck packed up, uh, you're ready to leave your family because, because of this? Everyone, everyone says she's mine, um, but it comes down to the conception date again. Um, my mom, family says she's an Abbott. She says, they look just like me uh, when, I, when I was a baby. I mean, look at her. She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I can see in your eyes that you really don't know. I don't. And I'm here today to find out, Your Honor. And so are you certain that there is no chance that this relationship can withstand this if, in fact, you are not Aubrey's biological father? If, uh, if Aubrey is not mine, Your Honor, I'm gone. There, there's no more. Uh, it's a wrap. It's done. Mm. It's over. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Lasio versus Abbott, as it pertains to seven-month-old Aubrey Ann Lasio, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Abbott, you are not her father. I'm so sorry.
It's over. Mr. Abbott, even given the bond you've already developed with Aubrey and Ms. Lasio's other child, can you really just walk away? I don't know. That's why I didn't walk away the first time. It's because of our other son. And I grew up in a broken home and I don't want that. It's obvious you love the children. And you love Miss Lasio. Yeah. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can say to fix it. <laughs> I love you and the kids love you. Even if it's not biological, you couldn't be any closer to them than anyone else in the world. Aubrey is innocent, and she's come to love you, I'm sure, and count on you. You have to consider all those things. At the end of the day, it truly is your choice. But if I am reading your emotion and your intention, I think you love them all enough to strongly consider it before you make a decision. Yes. And Ms. Lasio, that's all you can ask. As you can see, your choices have affected not just Aubrey, but your son as well. I don't have a crystal ball, but my heart says you all have a shot. So remember, one step at a time, make it a step forward, and keep the children first, okay? I wish you all the very best of luck. Court is adjourned.